live from Young Dundas Square. It is Saturday, March the 19th, 2011. I'm here covering a couple of different events. Um, there's one protest here uh, for democracy in Canada, basically protesting the way that uh, Prime Minister Stephen Harper has uh, hijacked the Canadian government and rebranded it the Harper government as if uh, he rules by divine right. Um, there's probably going to be another election coming up this spring and uh, I'm not sure if Prime Minister Harper will still be the Prime Minister after the election. There have been a lot of scandals coming out lately. So anyway, people are here to protest for democracy. The other events uh, that are scheduled here are protests for, uh, again, for Libya. Um, a no-fly zone has been set up above Libya and uh, many armed forces from many countries are on their way to interfere if necessary if uh, Gaddafi keeps uh, starting violent assaults against his people, especially people who are demonstrating for their own liberty. Uh, also there are people here from Bahrain that are uh, protesting as well. Saudi forces have gone in and started gunning down uh, peaceful protesters. So a lot going on this weekend. I'm going to try and cover both events here. So stay tuned. Okay, sure. continues to build here at Young Dundas Square. Obviously the uh, crowd that's gathered here in support of Bahrain and uh, Libya uh, is probably the largest group here, so I'm uh, happy to cover that event. Uh, also there's Canadians here uh, protesting and standing for democracy against the Harper uh, government, which has rebranded itself. Uh, instead of the Canadian government, we are now the, involved with the Harper government uh, holding the reins. So people aren't too happy about that. We want a Canadian government uh, of and for the Canadian people.
mean, I'm not, I'm not in East, but I'm not. A day where people stand in solidarity with, the Lib with Libya and major cities around the globe, and with Yemen and with Bahrain. As we speak to our brothers and sisters in Ottawa, Edmonton, Vancouver, and Winnipeg are all standing up and showing their support. We are all here to spread our message, which is unified, simple, and clear. That first and foremost, we stand in solidarity with the people in Libya, Bahrain, and Yemen. And we will not stop until there is a victory. Viva, viva Libya! Viva, viva Libya! Viva, viva Bahrain! Viva, viva Bahrain! Viva, viva Yemen! Viva, viva Yemen! They are fighting for their freedom of speech, human rights, and we stand here at this moment with them as they stand, march, cheer, fight, and die for their rights. But most importantly, we are here to say to stop the massacre of the Libyan people and the Bahraini people and the massacres of the Yemeni people and sending the message to the world that Gaddafi has to go along with our fellow Arab nations, Yemen and Bahrain. Several demands outlined by the Libyan Transitional National Council for the international community. The recognition of the Libyan Transnational National Council as a de facto legitimate representative of the Libyan people. The lifting of Libyan arms embargo as related to the Libyan National Transition Council. The issuance of arrest warrants for Gaddafi, his family and regime members responsible for the crimes that are being committed against the Libyan people. Immediate action to halt any material support being provided by nations such as Algeria, and Syria to Gaddafi's regime, the expansion of asset freezes to include other senior officials and family members exempted in the UN Resolution 1970. And finally, we call for continued humanitarian support for the crisis on Libya's border and inside Libya through the delivery of medical aid, food, and other required assistance. We are here to stand in solidarity with the Libyan people and the Bahraini and the Yemeni people and all people around the world fighting for their, for their freedoms and their rights. With the example of the patience of the, and persistence of the Tunisian and the Egyptian people, we have learnt now more than ever the power of peaceful demonstration and we are presenting that today. It is now where we see the luxuries we have here as Canadians. And we stand proud to say that we are Canadian. We are Libyan Canadian, Arab Canadians, Bahraini Canadians. We would like to also applaud our government and the international community in its, in its uh, ability to in implement the no-fly zone and recognizing the Libyan Transitional Council. The end is near. Down, down, get that feet. As the Libyan and the Bahraini people are dying to get their rights, we have a duty as Canadians to help in whatever means possible. This means protesting in order to both bring attention to the media and place pressure to end Gaddafi's tyrannical regime. The death tolls are devastating. And it is time for the Arab nations to regain power of their government. Viva, viva Libya! Viva, viva Libya! Down, down, get that fee! Down, down, get that fee! Down, down, Khalifa! Down, down, Khalifa! Up, up, Bahrain! Up, up, Bahrain! Up, up, Libya! Up, up, Libya! Dr. Fethi Abuzgaya is the first speaker today and he's an orthopedic surgeon and representative of Toronto's uh, Libyan community. He has recently participated in the humanitarian aid delegation to Libya where he and other medical doctors provided medical support for Libya spreading the democracy movement. Dear brothers and sisters, I am not a speaker. I wanted just to tell you a message from the Libyan people. As a few of the doctors from Canada decided to go and try to help in, in Libya, we have seen and witnessed many stories. We have seen so many atrocities committed by the Gaddafi regime. He spared nobody. Now kids, adults, civilians, and soldiers alike. 
He had ruled Libya for 42 years in, with tyranny. He has oppressed these people for 42 years, and one day, the people of Libya broke the fear barrier and decided to go out peacefully. Gaddafi forces decide to hit and hit hard, not with tear gas or police force, but with fire, with bullets, tanks, and eventually airplanes. It was a hard journey for us, but we saw as much as we saw of atrocities, we saw determination, resilience, and hope for the future. The Libyan people is determined to have Gaddafi no more. There is no divisions, there is no argument, there is not a single Libyan except for a very few who is in his armed forces who want Gaddafi. They don't want him anymore, they wanted to transfer Libya to a real democracy where people can come out and speak their mind without the fear of being prosecuted, jailed, and killed every day. There is a hope for Libya. We welcome the international decision of getting involved. Libya is not like others. There is no divisiveness in Libya. All Libyans are in agreement that they don't want this regime anymore and they want to transfer to a real democracy. The Libyan people need help, don't kid yourself. People who are arguing that we don't ask the international community to intervene are dead wrong. The Libyan people cannot do, them alone, do this alone, they need help. The civilian people need to be protected and the Security Council the Security Council has passed the resolution to protect the civilian people. The Libyan people don't want boots on the ground. They do not want military invasion, but they need help to get rid of Gaddafi. They want the freedom! So the message from the Libyan people, everybody we see, we need help. This gathering needs to stay united on course. It is not done yet. It is the start of the end for this tyranny but we're not there yet, so we need everybody's support and help. And I want to thank every, each and every one of you for your help, and I want to thank the Canadian government to be involved in, the, in this. And thank you very much. We now have another representative of the Libyan community, of the youth uh, community, Libyan community. Uh, he's a student, uh, a high school student, and his name is Hadi. Please welcome him. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Hadi. I am a high school student. I'm here today to say that the younger student population is standing here with the Libyan people. We are doing everything we can at our schools, raising awareness and money to be sent to help those in Libya. I am only 15 years old, and this is the age that innocent people in Libya are dying, even younger. When I hear that people in my country are dying in Libya, I am heartbroken. We are so lucky to be living here in Canada. We can speak about what we want openly. And this is what every human being deserves. It is our right. The people, the young children, the elderly, the students, the working class, everyone deserves to be free. Living in Canada, I do not understand how people can be silenced for over 40 years. We are so proud of the people overcoming the fear and fighting for their rights. They will not stop and neither will we. Just like Omar al-Mukhtar said, we will fight the occupiers until we kick them out or we will die in doing so. And Gaddafi is an occupier. He is not welcome or wanted in the country. The people of Libya and we here want him gone. We will not stop till he is. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Here's from the Bahraini community, Maryam Al Hawaj. Um, she is a representative of Toronto's Bahraini community and a member of the Toronto Arab Solidarity Campaign. Um, and Maryam is going to speak about the situation happening now in Bahrain. Hello, 
my name is Miriam Youssef. Uh, I'm in, from the Bahraini community in Toronto. Uh, before I start my speech, I'd like to thank the organizers of the rally uh, and thank you all for coming. We are here today to show solidarity with the oppressed people of Bahrain, Libya and Yemen and to raise awareness of all the massacres that the Bahraini regime is committing on civilians, especially after the Saudi invasion on Bahrain. In the early hour of March 16th, the Bahraini and Saudi troops cracked down on peaceful, unarmed protesters in the Pearl Roundabout, shooting shooting on people from ground and helicopters. Then they took over the main hospital, cutting off the electricity, beating doctors and nurses, and blocking ambul ambulances from transporting injured civilians to medical facilities. Yeah. Yeah. in their villages, schools, and homes. As a result, many were killed and thousands injured, including women and children. Two days ago, a doctor was arrested from the surgery room. There are more and more devastating stories in Bahrain that I cannot cover in my short speech. But the really sad thing in all is this, is the media blackout. Where, where are the human rights? Where is the United Nations? Where is the United States? Where are they all for these massacres? Finally, to save the people of Bahrain, we have an urgent call to the world. Get the Saudi invasion out of Bahrain! Get them out! And now! Thank you very much, Miriam. Divided